Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to What Is America To You? I'm your host, Derek Dempsey, and we're coming at you from New York. And when I say we, I mean me and Jessica. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wanted to hear, I always love to hear who. Okay, um, listen, I, you threw me right there. I'm like, where's the who? Okay, listen, we, we are loving the comments lately. Our top commentators are um, my sister-in-law, Karen. Love you. And uh, Sam, my friend in England, keep... Keep the comments coming. We love them. i got to catch up too. Also, give us a like. No thumbs down. We have plenty of time for that. And we just reached 200 subscribers. That's not a lot, but we're going to get there. We're going to get to, to 1,000, especially after this next guest. Okay, so speaking of our next guest, our next guest is an 11 times Grammy Award winner. That's I can't count those Grammys on one hand. So I could do this. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> I'll help you out. <laughs> that's the 11, that's the 11. <laughs> right, so um, he was born in Kingston, New York, which is only 45 minutes uh, north of here. Hello, Kerry, up there. And uh, he has made his way across the best stages and stadiums of the world with as lead singer with the Carlos Santana Band for 25 phenomenal years. Um, the great producer, drummer, songwriter, and personality, personality Narada Michael Walden. And just so you know who he is, he was... The guy that produced I Knew You Were Waiting For Me by um, George Michael and the great Aretha Franklin. And he also produced Whitney Houston's classic uh, I Want to Dance With Somebody. So this is who we're talking about here. Instead of our next guest that we all revered Donny Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. Well, our next guest said Narada Michael Walden is in that category. And I agree for what that's worth. Um, this outstanding talent we're about to introduce you to uh, has sang with other great singers. And I mean other great singers, equally brilliant. Al Jarreau, Stevie Wonder and Rita Franklin. And he's also performed with the Philharmonic, Philharmonic Orchestra. Yes. <laughs> That's when you know you're a singer. When Billie Holiday uh, was brought into the studio, uh, one of her recordings with Norman Grants, she walked in and she saw this this um, orchestra and she's like, I'm in the wrong studio, she said. <laughs> and he said, no, you're in the right studio. You're Billie Holiday, you're in that category. Anyway, um, right now he's at number two on the uh, Independent Soul Charts with um, All Is One. Great song, we'll put the link in it. Uh, we've been listening to it all morning. And he's in the studio recording right now a possible Christmas song for release. So, without further ado, we would like to introduce to you our next guest, Tony Lindsay. Good morning and welcome to What Is America To You? What's up? <laughs> we were here and that's what's up. And that is, an am that is an amazing thing to have you here. I'm glad you guys didn't do this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Nine o'clock in California. And that, I mean, you, you were, uh, we spoke last night at like midnight. So you were in the studio yeah, for at, pretty late. I was at my studio then, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was, the ideas were flowing. That's why I said, hey, we got to do this quick because, you know, you, all, all it takes is a second. Yep. And if you if you have an idea happening and, and it's flowing and you start talking to somebody and they say one thing that can have you thinking in a different direction, all the creativity is lost just like that. And that's why when you said that, I went, OK, got to go. <laughs> I, I, I totally got that. Before we get into uh, the interview, um. I just want to point out, and I'm sure people have already seen the Grammys over your left shoulder there. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's just Grandy Cammy, Candy Grammy. Yeah, can't even say it. Um, so we, I want to, I wanted to start off with, uh, I was, I was amazed that you were singing in in uh, a cappella like doo wop groups at the age of eight on the corner yeah. in Kingston. Could you tell us a little bit about that and your the fact that you um ended up leaving and going to, I think, North and South Carolina. You had a, an interesting, unfortunate incident there. Yeah. And then you said, I'm going to California, and that's when the career started. So maybe we could start with that. Going out, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, in my neighborhood down there in downtown Kingston, we, uh, me and three of my buddies, who we all lived on the same block, except for, I think Edward lived on, I wonder if he was still over on a Beale Street at that time or what. And I'm not sure how uh, uh, Edward Edward Ector, I'm not sure how he how we connected with him, because from where we lived on Meadow Street, which is no longer there, <laughs> they changed it, all the downtown stuff and the streets are gone. Where City Hall is downtown, that hill there. I don't know if you've been uh, if you've uh, been through Kingston. 
I know Kingston well, very well. But the um, that street where City Hall is on the hill there that goes up to the down, that was Meadow Street. That was the street that we lived on, which is right. a totally different. Uh, they tore all of that out down there now. And a Beale Street is still there. Matter of fact, the uh, building where we used to we used to practice all the time at 24 Beale Street is still there. They they renovated the uh, the building and all the apartments. They got a bunch of apartments in there. And we we used to practice on the top floor of that building all the time because um, the guy that was helping us, uh, the guy Wayne Anderson, who passed along about one or two years ago now, his uh, girlfriend lived in that building. Right. And he used to help us out with learning how to taught us how to sing harmony parts and all of that kind of stuff and taught us a bunch of songs. We were little kids, man. And he, he heard they, that a lot of people around town always heard us. And, you know, people helped us out. Uh, uh, Butch Armstrong, keyboard player, he helped us out. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of um, the other guy. That after, after you leave a place and you're gone for a while, the names start to... Yeah. Well, Tony, yeah. is is that near the Rondout? The Rondout right there. Is that where that Beale Street was? Um, it's I'm the trying Rondout, to think. The Rondout's right near where the boat the boats come in. I, unless I'm getting mixed up, but eh, no worries. No, no, no it's uh, it's not far. Yeah. Um. Uh. uh I'm trying to think of what's downtown now because I've haven't uh, I haven't been in Kingston for a while. So so many things have changed, but I know a Beale Street is still there, and and twenty four Bill Street still exists. That building there, people live in there, and it's, it's beautiful buildings down that way. Um, Good idea. Yeah, a plaque just, there. Yeah, we were just singing on the street corners, and you know, people saw us doing it and heard us, and you know, then all of a sudden, everybody there's a lot of people that started helping us out with uh, getting shows, and 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 we'd have a. a Folks, be, they would take us to places to to, to sing and then get into contests, and it was it was crazy, man. Brilliant. I, we, who who we, were your influences back then? Like who who was it that you wanted to emulate back then? Well, at the age, because it was we had the group called Four of a Kind. It was four of us, and uh, uh, we would do Temptation stuff and uh, Four Tops, of course. You know, a lot of Motown type of stuff. And uh, what else? Actually, we were even doing Santana stuff back then. <laughs> That's destiny. And it was weird because my cousin, uh, Alan Williams, who was one of the singers, and he he reminded me, because I knew we did the Santana stuff and all that. He says, he says, so, he says, I don't know if you remember. He said, but all the Santana stuff, you used, you, you, you were the one that was singing this stuff all the time. And I went, really? So It's like, like almost like you were destined to, to isn't that be... Weird? It is weird, and you have to question it. And you, yeah, because I've seen yeah. that in my own life. Destiny. Some people mock and laugh at it, but look, that's. Yeah. We didn't do it. We didn't do a lot of it, but the ones that we did do, apparently, I was the one that was singing the lead vocal on them. So, I love it. And you know, I never thought because at that age, you know, they and they had the Woodstock thing happening and all that, and you know, I was I was pretty young back then, so I was not really. Uh, a lot uh, aware of, of going what was going on. The only thing I do, did know there was there was a lot of people around around town in Kingston. All the hotels were booked up and all that because with the Woodstock thing wasn't that far from from Kingston at all. So, right, you right. know, had, people had somewhere to they had people had to stay somewhere. So the nearest towns are where they would stay. And man, I'm gonna tell you, that was uh, that was some error. I'll tell you, man, it was. Pretty crazy thinking about all that Woodstock stuff. Yeah, different time. I always say it was a time when Martin Luther King was still alive. You know, Bobby Kennedy was still alive. Right, right. Um, but you then you then moved on to, uh, was it North or South Carolina? And I, I listened to one of your interviews where you had a particular incident that made you say, I'm done. I'm oh. getting out of here. And you went to the West Coast. Yeah, I went down there. Because I, what I did was um, there were four places that I had on. I, I made a list of places that... I might. You know, I wanted to go check out to see if I could want to live there. So North Carolina was on the list. That was the first one because I have uh, my brother. One of my brothers lives down there. I got uh, uh, cousins and uh, and and uncle. I, a bunch of people live down in North Carolina. They still live down there too. Um, they can have it. <laughs> but <laughs> so I had that one. North Car Ra Raleigh, North Carolina, Washington D.C., Atlanta, Georgia. And California was the last one on my list. Last stop. That was the last one. So I went down, and I was going to uh, stay about two weeks 
at each place just to check them out to see what the field was and if I could want to want to stay there. So I went to North Carolina first and where my brother lives at, my brother Ronnie lives out in the, in the outskirts of uh, Raleigh near a, a, a part of the, what they call Research Triangle. That's where they moved the IBM plant and, and a bunch of the high tech stuff. They moved it down that way because IBM used to be in Kingston. Yeah, so they move it. They, I think they still have them in Peekskill and and uh, and a couple places there. And Fishkill and Fishkill too. Is yeah. it Fishkill? Yeah, I, probably so, Peekskill too. Yeah. yeah, so they all moved. A bunch of them moved down there. So I go down. I fly down, and I'm supposed to stay about two weeks. So I get down there, and then the next day I wake up and I say, "Yeah, you know, I want to go take a walk and see what's happening." So I walk. <laughs> I walk out. He says, "Yeah, there's a little shopping center about a mile or a mile and a half down the road." So I. I walk down there, walk around in there, walk into a store, and I get a bunch of stuff that I wanted to, to bring back to the house. And when I when I get in line, there is a so standing in in, in front of the line was a I think it was a white gentleman in front. Behind him was a black lady though, and then in front of me was another. There was a white lady standing in front of me, but after he waited on after the cashier waited on the person in front. The white guy looked right past the black lady and waited on the white lady in front of me. So when I saw that, I just pushed the stuff on the counter and I walked out of the store. I went back to my brother's house and I got on the phone to making a call to the airline. And I said, hey, you know, uh, my name is Anthony Lindsay. Um, I just landed here in Raleigh yesterday, but uh, is there, I, I know my flight's not booked for like two weeks from now. But can I get on a flight tomorrow <laughs> to, to go back <laughs> to all? I love that. That's awesome. I love that, Tony, because it's 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 easier. In one way, it's easier to say I'm going to ignore this, especially with the history of racism. To say I'm going to ignore this, but to actually stand up and say, like you you were inconvenienced, you had to put your stuff down, you had to walk away, you had yeah. to get a flight, you were inconvenienced, and. You know, it's sometimes it's easier just to go go with the flow, especially under the circumstances. So that to me is commendable, and and, and in so many ways, from a yep. white guy that has never dealt with that, and I will I deal with my own different. Right. <laughs> so I, I'm a bit look. This is why I know uh, John Lee. We 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 have spoke a lot about civil rights. Civil rights is is my thing, and I don't mm. care who's bored with it, because what else is the but human rights? What else is the but civil rights, minority rights, gay rights, women rights? Everything after that is just fluff. That's right. And that's how I feel about it, you know. So I love that you did that. So then you went to Calif you went to California. Yeah, I, I, I went back, and my brother was like, "What are you doing?" I went, "Hey, man, you know what? What I just saw and went through at that store. If I stay down here, they're going to be hanging me from a tree. I'm getting out of here, man." And and it was weird because that was in late. That had to be the late seventies when that happened because I moved to California in 19, 1980 is when I moved out here. And so I'd gone, I went back to Albany and I, I went back and, and, and worked for a while and started shipping all of my stuff. Cause I called, uh, after, after that happened, by the way, uh, I decided to cross Washington, DC, <laughs> uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and whatever the other place was on my list, I crossed them all off, and I said, "I'm going straight to California." So I had a I had a friend that lived out here, who was actually originally from Albany, New York. Uh, Tony Cachetti, who's also passed on, and his dad, his his dad's only living brother, lived in San Jose, California. And he said, "You know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be living." He says, "But I want to spend the rest of my years next to my brother." So. He picked up the whole family and they all moved to San Jose, California. And it was funny because he lived, they lived right, right around the corner from his brothers where they found the house too. Prince. So I, I called Tony and I said, Hey man, could you uh, check with your folks and see if it's okay for me to, to come to California? I want to get it. Cause in New York, man, and you know it, I mean, you see you're down where the weather is a little bit more reasonable in the winter time, but I was living in Albany at the time. <laughs> And man, that is brutal up there. Snow up to here. Oh, and not only the snow, but it's freaking cold as heck. And I got tired of that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't take that anymore. So I, it, it was time to go. Charlie and I, I, I don't regret 
any anything about moving to California. I don't regret any of it. And you know what's really, really, really strange and weird about it? Um, think about all these years that have passed now. And here we just had an election happen a couple days ago. And look at the states that is that are still red. In North Carolina, it's still one of those states yep. that didn't that didn't uh, uh, change. So you know, there's some places down in the South that are, look at Atlanta might be changing now. Who yep. knows? Slow change might be changing this month, yeah. but you know you get Texas and North Carolina and the Arkansas and Oklahoma. And they're not going to change, man. So yeah. there, there's there's a part of this country that I definitely wouldn't even think about living in. Yeah, at all. Martin Luther King said one of my favorite. I mean, the guy said everything came out of his mouth was amazing. I reckon if Martin Luther King said in the morning, I think I'll have a coffee with a bagel, I reckon people went, write this down. Because everything he said was amazing. But one of the best things he said was, the the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends mm-hmm. towards justice. And by seeing some of those states turning blue, we're seeing a slow bend towards justice. Exactly. Um, and... But but it's it's never quick enough, and it's the funny thing about any type of justice. It's the slowest moving train. Yeah, injustice, boom, it's there like that. Yeah, you yeah. know. So, so See, kind of, it, it's sad because the last three four years, it took us back to to a, a, a part that we don't want to be going through that anymore. You know. No. You know, Donald Trump was trying to take us back to an era there that that, that was not nice, man. You know, people divided and fighting with each other. And, you know, it's like that's so ridiculous. We're, we're so we I thought we were so far past that. And and it, it looks like, you know, uh, uh, things are uh, changing. See, the, the young a lot of the young folks got out and voted. They don't want to see that crap. No, happening. they don't. I love this new generation. Do you, do you have kids, Tony? Yeah, I have a son. He's going to be 30 next month. Okay, so he's of that young generation and my daughters are, are 26 and 23 and I say to them, I love your generation because you're the generation and I've said this before and I'll say it again, where if you if they if one of their male friends brings a guy called George along and goes, this is my new partner, they go, hey George, you want to get a coffee? They don't care. If, if right. another partner brings along somebody from a different ethnicity, right. they... They go, hey, nice to meet you, uh, Julie. And they go, you want to get a coffee? They don't give a shit. And that is what we have to commend this generation for. Well, you know, I think I think a lot of that is because we have so many interracial couples now happening that, you know, all these kids are mixed. Everybody's mixed with everything. So, you know, my, my wife is, is, is white, so my son is mixed. So you start doing something against uh, against white folks, and he's looking at him going, hey, 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 I'm part of that too, you know? And you do stuff against black people, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's in my blood. That's you it. Know? Tony, and my I, sister my sister brought um, um, beautiful African blood into our family. My brother brought Asian blood into the family. My daughter's married to um, a guy from Mexico. So we got yeah. it all. So when they're all together growing up in a nightclub, they're not taking shit from anybody. Because like right. we're white, we're black, we're uh, whatever. Everything so, yeah. is there, and that's the way it should be, man. It's like I mean, we're so and and I, I'm I apologize to the to that the younger generation because <laughs> we screwed up the environment for them. So you know, uh, one of the other things why they this vote needed to happen with, yeah. with the change of Joe Biden is because we have to get this environment together. Otherwise, uh, you know, our grandchildren all that they're going to be really messed up, man, because. This planet is in pretty bad shape right now. That's so we hallelujah. better start working on fixing hallelujah. it. Jessica's saying hallelujah. Well, Marvin Gaye said it in 72 in, in, oh, in yeah. the ecology song. And you know, there's the one thing I'll say and before we move to the next bit, because we could talk about this for a thousand years, no doubt, <laughs> is that one thing about p- taking a step backwards in any way is you tend to be focused. And I right. think now this these steps back we've taken in, in a lot of ways, um, it's particularly with women's rights, gay rights, and minority rights. I think we're going to be more focused that we're going to not let this happen again in in, in a quick hurry, Tony. I, I hope, really I hope, think that. Right. I hope so. Three steps back, maybe ten steps forward. But anyway, I wanted to ask you about um, your influence within uh, what gospel music would influence you, what jazz, what soul, and I know you're a big Duke Ellington fan. A lot of our guests are. Duke Ellington was a, an absolute genius. He was the Mozart of jazz. Yeah, I mean, I uh, when it came to jazz stuff, you know, I was listening to more Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan and uh, you know Joe Williams and, and and you know I listened I listened to all of the stuff, 
Um, I didn't listen to a lot of Duke Ellington, but you know, I did. I, I tried to listen to everything. It, the jazz, because with with my particular style of uh, of singing, I kind of try to mix the R and B with the jazz flavor kind of stuff. You do, and it. I'm I'm pretty much able to do all kinds of stuff. I mean, uh, doing the Santana thing, that's that's some rock stuff there, man. Yep. Like, you know, I like doing that kind of stuff too. I I, I love mixing it up. Okay, that was the end of part one of our interview with the great Tony Lindsay. Stay tuned. Part two coming at you soon. Driving along, minding my own business, heading east through the Kentucky rain. There on the radio, Johnny Cash was singing. I hurt myself just to see if I still feel pain. 